Hello and welcome to a bias millinery video. My name is Ilona, I am a milliner based in London and today I'm going to explore the bias. In a comment on my millinery fashion illustration video, Angelus asked, Hi Ilona, I'm enjoying all your videos so far. Brilliant idea to go with millinery sketching and please show us how you made your headpiece. I'd love to learn the technique. Thank you so much. Hi Angelus. Thank you for leaving me a comment. Of course I can show you how I made my turban. A few weeks ago, I made my own blocking net. I mentioned then that this particular foundation material is well suited to turbans. So that's what we're doing today. If you are enjoying my videos, why not leave me a comment? Please also consider subscribing as this helps my videos reach a larger audience. For this tutorial, you'll need a turban foundation made out of blocking net. Here's one I made earlier. To learn how to make one of these, you'll need to watch this video, which I've linked to a card at the top right. I've also got a buckram base pillbox ready because I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about the most important secret to good millinery. It's the bias. Shh, don't tell anyone. To learn how to make one of these buckram pillboxes, you will have to watch my video that's in the card at the top right. Another thing you'll need to prepare for this technique is your sewing machine. This kind of pin tuck turban requires rows upon rows of stitches, so your sewing machine needs to be prepared to work hard. To make sure your machine is up to this task, make sure it's cleaned and oiled up. I've got a video on that right up here. So, once you've gone through that prep work, let's get started. Before diving in, we need to talk about the bias. What is this mythical, mystic, magical thing? It sounds so complicated, it strikes fear and awe into the heart of every seamstress. It's the diagonal. Woven fabrics have a warp and a weft. The weft runs side to side while the warp runs top to bottom. An easy way to remember this is weft runs left. The warp runs parallel to the selvage, which is the tightly woven edge of the fabric where sometimes you see little tiny holes running along it. Where the warp and weft meet, there is a 90 degree angle. And the bias? Well, that's the 45 degree angle, hence the diagonal. Some TV shows, books and magazine articles will try to convince you that working on the bias is difficult and requires great skill. But I'm here to tell you, don't worry. It'll be fine. So, now we know what the bias is, why is it so important, especially in millinery? Well, because the fabric is on a 45 degree angle, it becomes stretchy. Those spaces between the plain weave fabric give fibres space to move and stretch into new directions. If you are a seamstress, you may already know that the bias holds a special place amongst cuts of dresses. If you cut a dress on the bias, it flows beautifully. It moulds to the shape of the body without the need for darts, gathers or fasteners. For example, here is a modern flowy dress cut to a late 30s, early 40s silhouette. It has gathers here and fasteners down the front to enable me to get in and out easily. And here is a bias cut dress for comparison. This happens to be my wedding dress. And yes, I still wear it to events. I love it very much and it makes me feel fabulous. See how it molds to my form? It has no darts and no fastenings. And to put it on, I have to slide it over my head. This is a property of material that is essential to millinery. Not only does it look pretty, but it also enables materials to go round curves. After all, our heads are round. And now to the sewing. First, we'll make a pin tuck turban and later in the video, we'll make a bias strip covered pillbox and teardrop. First off, you'll need to turn your piece of fabric into large wide bias strips. I'm making my strips 30 centimeters wide, but they can be as narrow or as wide as you want. It's up to you. Speaking of fabric, today I'm using one meter of medium silk dupion. Plain cotton is also a good choice, as is stretch jersey. Essentially, you want a fabric that can hold a little bit of body in it. You'll also need a thinner bias strip about six centimeters wide and as long as your head size plus three centimeters. Fold this thinner strip almost in half and iron it. Then fold in one centimeter of each edge and iron that. We're essentially making some bias binding here. Sew the ends right sides together to form a circle with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. 
Then sew it to the inside of your blocking net turban foundation, positioning the stitching line slightly closer than 2cm away from the edge. Fold over and stitch in the ditch, meaning stitch as close as you dare to the folded edge, making sure to catch the other folded edge in your stitching line. If you don't feel too confident doing this on the machine, you can always hand sew it using tiny felling stitches. Now, let's get back to our wide strips. The secret to this pin tuck turban is stitching rows of reversed pin tucks. Traditionally pin tucks on say a blouse would be used instead of darts to add a decorative detail to a shaping element. In this case we are going to make our pin tucks on the wrong side of the fabric so they won't be seen and they will be on the inside of the turban. On the outside we'll be left with rows upon rows of folds. To sew the pin tucks, I'm starting about 5cm in and placing each row of stitching about 1.5cm apart. This is totally arbitrary, place them as close or as far apart as you like. There's no need to measure and mark everything here, as there is so much stitching that any small errors will be lost anyway. To get started, you may find it easier to iron in the first pin tuck and then you can really put your foot down on the pedal and get going. And don't worry if you can't sew a straight line. Variation in line widths looks more organic, which is more pleasing to the eye. Here's some tips to make the sewing easier for you. Use a non-stick glide sewing machine foot for sewing silk. Make sure your presser foot is set to the lightest setting. Set your stitch length to 3.5, the perfect balance between rationing thread but still having a strong stitch. I'm using a quilting guide bar to help me space the pin tucks. This really isn't necessary and I did end up ditching it while I sewed my second 30 meter strip. Make sure you are following the true bias. All that means is that if you are slightly off the 45 degree angle, sewing will become much more difficult. Don't pull the fabric through the machine, leave that to the feed dog teeth. You can lightly place your hand on the fabric to give it a direction, but let the machine decide at which rate it wants to pull it through. Phew! What a lot of stitches! What you should end up with is two bits of bias fabric that look like this. Don't be tempted to iron them, they need to stay puffy and voluminous. It's now time to position them onto the turban foundation. For a comprehensive list of sewing supplies, have a look at the description box below. Start by covering the front to back of the turban. Pin it down and cut off the excess. You may need two or three widths to cover the front to back, depending on your head size and width of bias strips. I've used three widths of one of my bias strips as I like the voluminous look. I'm sewing it down using tie tack stitches. As turbans are traditionally unlined, I tend to use thread that matches my foundation colour. With your second length of bias strip, wrap it around the turban and position the ends any way you like. You can tie a knot, you can wrap them around each other, or even leave one end sticking up outwards like so. If you want more volume, you can even stuff your knot with some wadding. I encourage you to play around and find the look that brings you the most joy. Once you're happy, pin it all in place and stitch it down. I start with using invisible stitches using green thread around the base of the turban. I'm hiding my stitches in the folds of the fabric so that the thread does not show through. There we go, all done. What do you think? I think this is rather a neat technique. 
This pin tuck technique doesn't just have to be used on turbans. Here is a callow half hat I made using silk crepe de chine. I've trimmed it with a spray of white cockerel feathers and a fabric knot. Shall we do some gardening? That's the tab and done, let's move on to the bias strips. For the bias strips, you will need a buckram base to cover. I've already linked to my video on making one of these in the top right. There's two methods of how to use bias pleats to cover a base. For both methods, the first step is to make your bias strips. I'm making this version out of leftover silk dupion fabric. It's super important to be precise and cut on the true bias. A set square ruler is a real lifesaver here. I'm making my strips 6cm wide so that when they're folded and overlapped, each strip will end up being 2cm wide. But this is your hat, so you make them as wide or as thin as you want. When you measure your strips, don't forget to double your goal and add 1cm for the overlap. Once your strips are cut out, you need to iron them gently in half. Before I start placing the strips, I've gone ahead and added a bias binding to the inside edge of my hat. Then, for this version, I'm going to place each strip individually and pin it all in place. Then, only once I'm definitely happy with the placement, I will start to stitch everything down using invisible stitches. I am also trying to hide my stitches under the folds of each next bias pleat. As well as the pleats fanning from front to back, I've added horizontal strips along the sides to make sure the whole of the base is covered. As for the number of strips that I use, I stick to numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. I've added a bow for completeness and finish the inside in the usual manner with a tip and side band lining. Once again, the perfect accessory. The now, let's cut some more strips for method number two. I've run out of my green silk dupion, so I'm using orange instead. While we're still cutting and pressing, let's talk foundations. Your foundation for this doesn't have to be a pillbox, it can be a callow half hat, a beret, or a percher shape. The easiest shape to cover by far is a button. For this demonstration, I shall be using a teardrop. This time, instead of placing each strip one by one on your hat base, stack your strips on top of each other, making sure that the fold is on the same side. Then, stitch through the corner nearest to the fold, about 3mm in. I'm going to arrange the stack of strips on my base. I'm choosing to put mine at the top curve of my teardrop, but you could also place it in the centre if you are covering a beret or a button. After about 15 minutes of manipulation, I'm ready to stitch it down using invisible stitches. I ran out of orange thread, so I'm having to use pulled threads from my offcuts of silk dupion. done, I've added yet another big bow. From the back, I think it looks like a beautiful butterfly. Of course! 
course, there are exceptions to the rule of using the bias, but in general, you want your fabrics and woven foundation materials to be on the bias. Speaking of exceptions, here's one. Can you see how the strands of this fabric are parallel to the base and lip of this cuff pillbox? And at the top dome of the pillbox, the fabric is placed on the straight grain from the front to the back. This is partially because this was literally all the fabric that I had to work with of this type, but also because this fabric weave has a very strong and striking pink fiber running through it. I wanted to highlight it and make it a feature by making it follow the line of this hat. If you're enjoying today's video, please like and subscribe. This really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. I hope you'll join me in the next couple of weeks for some spooky Halloween themed hat videos. For more hat related content, you can follow me on Instagram at Biolona Millinery. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Oh, that was it. Oh, that was abrupt. <laughs> Change to orange bow. I have to stay very still with this one because I forgot to put a clip in it. <laughs> That's on.